Today's exercise is going to be deep backwards crossovers and this is going to give us an opportunity to practice the backward inside portion of the backwards crossover. It also gives us a chance to reflect on a very important part of the concept of being a figure skater. Sometimes the fact that we're in motion is the only thing that's holding us up. We're going to be making shapes with our body that can only be balanced by the very fact that we are traveling across the ice on a curved pattern. And we need to learn to be able to ride those glides and sustain them with ease. Our deep backwards crossover exercise will form a serpentine pattern progressing down the long axis of the rink. Maintaining a generous knee bend throughout and aiming to ride the midsection of our blade to eliminate toe scratch. Now let's cover the finer details that will help improve our execution of this deceptively simple warm-up. Free leg alignment will be paramount. We will also be addressing our core control as well as the hips and finally adding some upper body shaping when you feel ready. Understanding the end point is vital here, so we need to know that the little toe side of the foot is going to be the last thing leaving contact with the floor. To help us achieve that divine point, we have to engage our ankle. Notice here the point away through the blade to get right to the edge of the little toe before leaving the ground. But wait, won't that make me toe push? Well, if we use our sense of direction, and here we'll use compass points, we can manage to avoid toe push. So, in a deep knee bend, we make our cross, and as we're sending that free leg, it's going to be on a diagonal axis. That free leg will naturally end up with some distance from that front foot. Watching a slow motion, we can observe the relationship of knee and ankle, flexion to extension, bent to straight, and how we can point right at the end of that arc. So back to talking about the upper body, we're going to be looking at the square, that is hip, hip, shoulder, shoulder, chin, chin and making sure that even though we're reaching under at this point, we're trying to keep a sense of a relationship between the hips and the shoulders. That can be on a natural lean, which is much harder to do when we're stationary, as we talked about in the beginning, or we can counter that slightly to try and keep the shoulders a fraction more level. But most important, we don't want to see big variations in the hips roaming around. A lot of back motion of the free hip is bad. It's going to cause you to turn out. And likewise, we don't want to see lots of outward push of the standing hip in this direction. We want to make sure that we're truly keeping our muscles, our deep rotator muscles and stabilizers, all really engaged here to help us to settle into that riding position. So in essence, it doesn't really matter whether we allow ourselves to follow the alignment of the whole body or whether we remain with the upper body more in a truly horizontal plane. The most important thing is that we get that sense of our center opposing the direction of our free leg. Okay, time to film some examples. The lean-in variation seen here allows a skater to develop a greater free leg range through counterbalancing the weight of the upper body and the free leg. An upright torso alignment can limit the range of the free leg, but we can overcome that by increasing our knee bend and actively superadducting the free leg. It's worth knowing that neither alignment is technically superior to the other and both have uses in different elements and skills. Of course, it's always possible to take a plain exercise and make it just a little bit more aesthetically beautiful. So we can add arms, one way, another way, another way, 
as we feel ready to add them.